Hi friends! You guessed it, we are at Maddie's house! Today we're combining Pat McGrath's Mothership 3 and 9, Subversive and Utopian Dream. But first, if it's your first time here, hi! I'm Alicia, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you're returning, well thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I am a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. Because I'm at Maddie's, I didn't bring all the motherships with me because that would have been overdoing it. But I figured from the comments from my last mashup video with Midnight Sun and Utopian Dream that Subversive will be the next one up for our McGrath mashup. And I'm very excited to combine these because Blitz Amethyst with Astral Moon, no, I'm sorry, thick. Amethyst, Astral Moon, and several other combinations I cannot into. While saying all this, I realized that I did not bring my lashes. Which is funny because I spent two days packing, but I guess I forgot that. We'll use mascara. It's not my favorite because these looks will be very bold, uh, sparkly, arkly. We'll make it. We're gonna make it, fam. Here they are side by side. I think they complement each other very well. So we'll get into this. Let me put these here. And I promise to, excuse me, hold up the palette because last time I did not, I got a little lazy. I took for granted that many have already seen my Midnight Sun videos. I have a lot of tutorials on that palette alone. And with the review video on Utopian Dream and the, and the several times I showed it on camera, I was just saying her names, but I'll show, I'll show. Okay, I'm sitting on two yoga blocks, by the way, because you just have to go with the flow when it comes to uh, filming situations that are not ideal, but we will make it. We're gonna make it happen. This is why I stretch so I could sit in this low squat position for an extended period of time without dying. Oh, wow, I didn't bring my primer either. Well, this is turning out to be a fantastic video so far. I'll go in with Pat's concealer for primer on my lids. I typically do not like to use primer for eyeshadow prep because it's meant to be emollient or more so for under eye use and therefore could negatively impact the longevity of the shadows. However, since this is a demo and I will not be sporting these eyes out in the 90 degree, 110% humidity weather that's going on right now, it should be okay. All right, dab on a little concealer. I should do some on my nose. I did apply some Paradise Venus earlier. I'll redo the complexion as soon as we get these eyes on. So that means we gotta get in a little closer. <gasps> That's enough. Oh, I could lift my mic up higher because the frame's tighter, haha. -ha. What shall we start with? You know, I'm dying to go in with, I have the names on my phone here because I did not bring the box because that would have been a lot, hello? Same frame. I think I want to go in with. <laughs> I'm I'm just overwhelmed in the best way. There's so many combinations I want to do. You know what? Let's just do Blitz Amethyst right away. This one here. This is one of the special shades found in Subversive. It has a blue to purple. I don't even know. This flip. It's a duochrome blue purple flip. And it's it's quite nice on the eyes. Very easy to blend. Here it is up close. It's tough to see on camera, but I think if I got the lighting right, you'll be able to see the flip. I typically like to apply these types of textures with my finger first, and then I'll go in with a brush to further refine the edges here. Who am I kidding doing this without a mirror? You crazy? Tap around the edges here, and you find that these textures are, are easy to deal with in that you don't have to rely on a matte shadow, whether it be in the Mothership palette or another, to buff the edges for a nice blurred effect. These textures make it so that you could feather the brush along the edges of the texture itself, and it blurs on its own. That's down first. Before I slap on some actual Amethyst Moon, I do want to maybe pair this with 
Maybe not something from Utopian Dream per se. I want to hit the outer corner with, I think, black metal. This is more of a metallic. Well, is it? I forget the texture of this. This is, yeah, it's, it's a metallic, but it's a tighter formula. It's kind of like what exists in Bronze Seduction, Mothership 5, those two crazy shades that are very glittery. This one's tighter in the pan, whereas Lazarus has a much smoother blend. So you can see that there. I think what I'll do is I'll take my Sonuji Lotus Worker with some black metal and just start to tap it on the outer part of the lid. I could have went in with the Intensifies wand first for Blitz Amethyst. I'll place Intensifies over Blitz Amethyst so we can prep the stick, if you will. So when we apply Astral Amethyst Moon, it's gonna look glorious. I'm making sure that I'm not getting out of hand with black metal I'm using very tiny short like strokes of the brush to control the placement here. Now, if you really wanted to get smoky smoky, we have extreme black here in this palette. And afterwards, I think it was, yeah, cause Decadence was Mothership 4. After Mothership 4, the deepest shade was something else other than black, which we were very happy to see from Mother. However, if you wanted to get super deep, then you will have to go back into another mothership. So here I'm placing extreme black right on the outer part of my V here to accentuate the intensity, the smoke, to bring in a little more, further emphasizing what black metal already have, but just amping it a bit. This is a Koyuro Yoshiki brush that I actually recently just did a video on, I described how it might not have been ideal for lid placement, but for outer lid and just more precise placement of color, like here along the lash line, it rules. I like it a lot. It rules. What is this, Clueless? Skin Show Fever is the beige metallic here in Subversive. Let's apply that on the brow bone now. Ooh. This is the reason, or one of the reasons why I opted to get Subversive first as my foist Mothership palette because of the Skin Show Nude Shade. It's a little more golden than the others. And I was like, yep, that's the one. All right, it's time. Intensifies right on top of Blitz Amethyst. It's right here because what we're about to do is slap on Astral Amethyst Moon, this shade right here from Utopian Dream, just with the finger, okay? Just with the finger. Oh yes, there it is. This definitely amps up the blue in Blitz Amethyst, like it really just brings it forward, makes it a lot more shiny dazzly, placing a little more blitz here. So that transition can appear a little more even. Now what to do for the inner corner? Well, I definitely wanna go in with either VR Pink or Astral Ghost Orchid. So this is VR Pink, Astral Ghost Orchid. VR Pink is, is pretty, maybe not the same or within the same color scheme that we have going on because next to Venusian, Venusian Orchid from Utopian Dream, maybe Venusian Orchid will be a more appropriate joining of colors, if you will. Let's take my Hokoro Sable Brush or Kalinsky, this is Kalinsky, excuse me, from their Sora line and placing that on the inner part of this eye overlapping Blitz Amethyst and taking a little bit of the shade under the inner part of my lash line. 
that's pretty. I like how even though Astral Venusian Orchid has a little bit of that line flip, it still works. I can't even imagine that on top of Gigabyte. I'm struggling whether, we're gonna do two more Ilex for sure, but I'm struggling to decide whether I want to do Night Creature or a Gigabyte for the next round. I kind of want to pair Night Creature up with Secret Eden and Extreme Plum Noir. That's kind of what I want to do, you know what I mean? Let's finish this eye, however. Let's go down with... Oh, you know what? I could do Night Creature on the bottom here. Night Creature being this shade, which I consider to be one of Mother's quintessential moments from all her palettes. Taking the same Hokuto brush, tracing that color along the lower lash line, and then taking black metal on the outer part to overlap with Night Creature here. They might combine a little bit and that's okay. I want Night Creature to be the majority of the color story that's going on the lower lash line. You can go in with a liner. I rarely wear liners anymore. I know it's terrible. I have a bunch of them, but I just find myself not reaching for them often. And especially when traveling, I just don't pack them. <laughs> I just don't. Astral Ghost Orchid or even VR Pink to amplify what's going on in Night Creature. Let's take Astral Orchid, Astral Ghost Orchid, same brush. Placing it here right on Night Creature. That's pretty. All right, let's do it. Starting this eye. Let me go in with this brush. Going in with the Biciotto, I believe it's the BS, BES01. It's, it's rather huge, <laughs> but let's try it with Secret Eden. This shade here from Utopian Dream. I'm slicing that across the crease, let me, oh no, no, sabotage. This is what happens with concealer. You have to make sure when going in on the second eye that you blend out what probably started to crease. Ooh, this is a great brush for the crease. It's not your typically shaped, fluffy, uh, tapered crease brush, but it's still tapered, but it's in this barrel shape that just gets the, color on fast and a lot at the same time without it turning muddy that's the key because sometimes if it's too much color at once it could be a little much but that's pretty nice Bisioro. i want to try all the brushes now do i want to go in with plum noir first to set this this smoke up i think i do kioredo kiwami Eyeshadow brush, I forgot the number, it will be down below. Extreme Plum Noir, this color here. Definitely not as much punch as Deep Shade. Deep Shade is gonna give you a lot more. I just, you know, if I had to apply Deep Shade, then I will. But let's go in with the Plum Noir first. Tapping this on the outer part of the lid. Feathering the edges there so it could look nice and diffused. This is a gray squirrel brush. It won't pick up as much as a goat hair brush, but I just love the shape and how it fits perfectly onto the inner or rather outer corner of my eye and makes it just a breeze to blend. Hopping back in with intensifies, this time to set up my creature. And with that said, going in with a finger, make sure I'll do my left finger. Here we go. Oh, oh boy. This is hands down one of my all time favorite shades from Pat. Out of all the palettes she has released, I can never, ever get enough of my creature. The color is just, I just, the tone of this color. It cannot be explained. I don't know what it is. Let's go in with a shader brush. This is the Sonogy Lotus Builder. And I'm wrapping that around and under the crease to get a little more precise with that placement. 
and overlapping with extreme plum noir. We'll go back on that juncture in a moment because I want it to look more diffused. Maybe we'll invite deep shade just on the very outer edge of the, the lid to create a, a more pronounced gradient because I like extreme plum noir here right where Night Creature stops. I'm feeling that, fam. I think I just want a little more. So deep shade, the brown shade that I showed from Subversive prior, I'm tapping that with the same Curedo brush on the outer V, overlapping extreme plum noir. <laughs> Beautiful. Taking deep shade with the same brush, outer lower lash line. Ooh, I wanted this to be a little more hazy than usual. That's why I'm using this brush on purpose. I could have used Sonia's Lotus Soft Definer. Much smaller, would have been more precise in application, tighter, in tighter to the lower lash line, but I just wanted to mm, amp it up, you know what I mean? The question is now, fam, do we go in with Astral Amethyst Moon on top of Night Creature or Astral Venusian Orchid? That's hard. We gotta do the amethyst moon, come on. We got, we got to. Applying a little more intensifies here and with the astral amethyst now. Oh, that's pretty. Is bringing out more blue because night creature is already purpley based. Check that out. That is shiny. And you know what? I think I wanna slap on a little more intensifies on the inner part of the eye here because I definitely wanna go in with VR Pink from Subversive. I think this is a beautiful pairing with Night Creature and using my Lotus Builder, pick up some VR, that's it. That's it. This is too much right now. The, the two? much is going on right now. I love this pairing. It's just extraordinarily beautiful, especially now that it almost looks like fluorescent pink going into that blue purple duochrome from the Astral Amethyst, but still having that strong magenta base from Night Creature is just mwah. I'm just flipping away a little bit of the actual amethyst moon that might have gone on the matte shadow. You know what is all good. It happens. It happens. In a corner, mm, I gotta go in with cosmic bloom. I think this will be beautiful on the inner lower lash line. Definitely a smaller brush, and that will mean my reference number three, one of my go-to pencil brushes for inner lower lash line moments. It's hard to see, but Cosmic Bloom has a lot more warmth than VR Pink. I could quickly swatch for you here on the back of my hand. So this is Cosmic Bloom, VR Pink. You see how VR Pink is significantly, well, not by much, but it's cooler and it's a VR shade, so it's gonna serve more as a topper versus Cosmic Bloom is more of an actual metallic. I definitely went overboard with that application, but it's fine. What I'll do is now go back in with my Curedo brush, a little bit of Extreme Plum Noir, and I'm pulling it down significantly, actually. It might get a little bit covered by my concealer application. I, I think I'll apply a little bit more when I rejudge the complexion, cause I'm looking a little dead, it's fine. <laughs> We're gonna clean that up, it's gonna be okay. Ooh, you know what? Let's go in with the Skin Show Nude Shade from Utopian Dream on this brow bone. A lot more cooler than the one that exists in Subversive. All right, fam, let's get the rest of the face going, apply some mascara, and I'll be right back. Ooh, we close up. Ready, before we zoom out, just take a look. Wow, I'm telling you fam, my allegiance to Midnight Sun is real, but combining both Utopian Dream and Subversive has my heart palpitating like 
you don't even know. I love my olives and my burgundies that exist in Midnight Sun my blitz violet orchid but combining cosmic bliss extreme plum noir with night creature and even with blitz amethyst and black metal topped with astral amethyst moon i can't and here's a wide shot of both looks i'm completely and utterly in love man now it's time to go into Gigabyte in the last round. And I think I want to rely on Lazarus as a main stage shade also because combining Lazarus with either Bronze Desire or Blitz Extreme or Blitz Extreme with Gigabyte is gonna be a party. I'll see you after I clean these lids. I'll be right back. Gigabyte, what should we pair with Gigabyte? I'm looking at these colors and um, mm, don't know if I wanna pair shockwave or secret eden with a color like this this just beautifully rich antique gold that has like that rustiness to it that grunge to it it's like a standalone thing you know what i'm saying i do want to see blitz extreme in the crease you know what hold on let me apply some intensifies first because possibly depending on how i feel like it looks i'll go in with blitz extreme afterwards so here we go gigabyte classic pat mcgrath i mean can't get enough right on intensifies this shade is inexplicably gorgeous just it's a feeling. It's not even a shade, it's a vibe. I have no idea how I wanna go about, you know what, let me go back into my Bisioto brush. Cause I really like that little brush. This one right here with a uh, Gigabyte. I'm just gonna see what it does through the crease. Okay, is this gonna be a one and done moment? Am I even going to add anything else you know what i don't think so i don't want to add bliss extreme i think that would just it will take us from where we're at and i like where we're at what i can do however i'll take extreme black with my koyoro yoshiki brush and just with the tip of it apply a little bit on the very outer part of the lash line here because there's like a black base in gigabyte that i feel we can capitalize on by applying a little bit or well i guess we're beyond the point of a little bit at this point some extreme black just to bring in a little more intensity here on the outer v cleaning it up here Ooh, this on its own amazing but how about venetian orchid we can make that happen i think that'd be okay to do so let me see here intensified in a corner refer 28 a smaller shader brush with venetian orchid from utopian dream tapping that right Oh, that's pretty. You know, we're going into the territory of combining the gold with this lavender flip. I'm not mad at it, though. I like what it's doing. I haven't applied Gigabyte in a long time. Wow, this is like... <laughs> Have you guys seen Sex Life? I know it's not the best show on Netflix. I know. Bay and I watched it, and our question was like, who's your Brad? I feel like Subversive is being my Brad right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Cooper's Midnight Sun. This is what's happening, friends. Because the combinations right now, like... Mm. I gotta get into Gigabyte more. This is crazy. All right, but I have not figured out what I want to do with the bottom lash line. Ooh, I could do Blitz Extreme. I could do Bronze Desire. Let's do Blitz Extreme. 
It might be a huge mistake or it could be something gorgeously amazing. In with my Sony G Lotus Soft Definer. Oh, I like that. You know why I think it works is because there's a beautifully strong green apple shift that exists here in Blitz Extreme and a little bit of that green hue also is happening with Gigabyte. So I don't know how they would have paired if applied together on the same lid, but I think they look gorgeous when one is up and the other is down. Oh yes. Oh yes. We, I like that a lot. Okay, next tie. <sighs> Lazarus. Sticking to just Lazarus on its own for now, it is this just beautifully rich, like it's, it's brown, but it has like this sheen to it that's almost pink. I can't quite identify what it is, but it's one of the most beautifully rich brown shades Pat has ever released. I had a little bit of black metal still on the brush, but I like how it kind of smoked it up a little bit. But this Lazarus on its own is like the quickest eye you could achieve from Subversive. And probably why people think Subversive is intimidating if you do, because is go smoky, go colorful, or just stay at home. That's, that's what you get from Subversive, especially with the metallic like Lazarus. Although you can rely on the Skin Show Nude Shade to be placed on the lid, maybe Lazarus on the outer lash line, deep shade or even extreme black, that's how you can kind of water it down, if you will. But man, I was just Lazarus all day, baby. I kind of want to do something nuts, though. I want to take Shockwave, this coral matte from Utopian Dream, and make like this this burst of pink right on the inner part because I feel a little bit of this exists in Lazarus. And I think, yes, like building it up in the brow to just get crazy here. Combining this shade with Lazarus, I think brings out the pink from Lazarus a little bit more, like that sheen that I was trying to describe. Definitely, Shockwave helped out with that. Bronze Desire on the lower lash line. I was thinking about overlapping it on top of... <sighs> Lazarus, I don't know though, I don't know. On the bottom, I think will be good. Same soft definer brush. Interesting, it appears more copper next to Lazarus. This is Bronze Desire. This is Lazarus. You see just like that, that difference. <sighs> They're both gorgeous. I was just thinking maybe combining Bronze Desire in some way with Lazarus on the top. I could possibly, let's see here. Let me go back in with my builder, pick up some Bronze Desire and maybe place it on the inner part of the lid here. Oh yeah, Bronze Desire is like the pinkish shade, or maybe it's copper and I just can't detect it, that exists in Lazarus. I think that's what's happening, so that's a really fun pairing. Taking the deep shade and overlapping Bronze Desire with it, layering it over. And you know what? I'm bringing some up onto Lazarus as well, because so I want to get a little more diffusion from this point here. So this is my way number five. I wanna get a little more hazy here. Not so much apply more color. Yes, yes, we like that. But the inner corner for this, Astral Ghost Orchid. I don't know about Amethyst Moon. It could be something. It could be something. I could just go Skin Show Nude Glow, but why? I mean, we're here to get crazy and there was something on that intensifies. <laughs> Make sure you wipe before you put on. All right, this is it. 
The last piece, Braun Solaris. I expected Christine from Temtalia to grade this very low because immediately upon feeling it, it was so dry. But man, with intensifies, please, like melted gold. So I understand if you will not have a great time if you apply this dry. I mean, you would just be miserable. But on top of an adhesive like this, This right here is it. Ooh, I feel like, you know what I wanna do? I wanna take a blush brush here. I think this is, it'll be down below. Popping on some shockwave. On this side, I wanna bring it higher so we could create these nice blush brackets, kind of pulling from what we did with the shadow and bringing it onto the cheeks. Here, I think I wanna leave alone. I don't know if I wanna invite something else. I could. If you like spray, you could spritz and then apply either VR Pink or Astral Ghost Orchid from Subversive on the high points of your cheekbones. That will definitely like make it electrified looking. And since I'm not applying lashes, I'm just going to slap on a little bit of Dark Star. So I did apply my Kill Lash first and then went in with Dark Star. I actually like them together because I just love using a big brush like this, although I recognize its shortcomings, especially when it comes to applying mascara to the lower lashes. You could get, you know, mascara where you don't want simply because the brush is so big. So I rely on the Kill Lash to set up my curl and to also paint on mascara on my lower lashes as that does not transfer and this will. So this is gonna be my big banger for the top lashes. And then I'll go back in to Kill Lash and apply a little more on the lower here, especially up against all this shadow. Eyes are complete. Ooh, hoo, 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 ha, ha. And here's a wide shot of demo number two. I had so much fun, fam. If you happen to have purchased Utopian Dream, you've got to combine it with Subversive if you have Mothership 3. You could go beyond the combinations I presented in this demo and just go wild. Like there are so many different possibilities that live within these two palettes that it would just blow your mind. And these textures, they're just so sparkly and shiny without the chunk. While I understand Astral Amethyst Moon has a little more chunk than her previous astral shades i think because maybe the nature of the color perhaps that was the only possibility that existed when if she wanted that combination so she had to sacrifice some texture but man when you like for instance if you get a flashlight on this the sparkle is insane it's just the camera does not do it justice whatsoever whatsoever especially after it has settled onto your lid it kind of melts in with the oils that eventually break through and one of you had asked the longevity of the pen i'm going to keep this on for a few hours and get back the pen is designed to help the shadows last long on your lid but pat mcgrath shadows especially her special shades which i find extraordinary and people also found remarkable as well was their longevity despite it being a specialized texture and had that dazzle finish it lasted rather long on the lid so i'll get back to you on that it is right now it is 301 <laughs> Bassy Nosuke from Demon Slayer, hi. We got like, let's see, I know I'm gonna keep it on maybe around until eight, nine. I know that's not a huge amount of time, but something I can report back about. Let me know if you ended up picking up Utopian Dream, what you have been thinking about it, if you have been combining it with other Pat McGrath palettes, with other shadows. You know what I also brought along to Maddie's house? I also brought my Cleona shadows that 
uh, a friend of mine was so kind to gift to me. So these are combinations of ones that I had already purchased and the ones that she had gifted. So we could take a look at these and combine different, you know, and have like a an indie party. It could be a live too. I think I think we'll be cordial enough to participate in that conversation where those who just don't want to buy Pat McGrath or feel they don't need Pat McGrath and they have a bunch of indie shadows, we can share the substitutes for that exists in let's say uh, Davina, Terra Moon, Cleona to what we have in our mothership palettes and you know just have a blast combining different textures and colors and have <laughs> galaxy eyes. I'll see you down in the comments fam and until then that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. monthly favorites or lunchtime chit chat. Take care and I will see you again soon.